on the Essex coast between the village of Chelmbury and the ancient oyster fishing hamlet of Wickledroth lies a great marsh. It was one of the last wild places in England. It was desolate, lonely, made lonelier by the cries and calls of the sky children who made it their home. One spring in the 1930s, a man came to the abandoned lighthouse at the mouth of the Elder. He bought the light and many acres of marsh. This man lived alone. He was a painter of wild birds and for reasons had withdrawn from society. For he was a hunchback, his left arm withered, the hand malformed like the claw of a dead eagle, but his face radiated a strange intensity. His name was Philip Ryada. One day, 
three years after he had come to the marsh, a child approached the lighthouse, a girl no more than 12. In her arms, a white bird, red with blood. Sportsman, Ryada knew their mark well. At first, the girl hesitated at the sight of his malformed body. Are you the man that mends broken birds? He smiled. Gently, she handed him the injured creature. The bird was a rare stranger to these shores, for she was a snow goose from a faraway place, a sky princess. The girl watched in wonder as the strange man cleaned the wounds, strapped the wing and splintered the leg. For the first time, he observed the girl. She was willow slender, Saxon yellow hair, ill-clad, dirty, but under that dirt, as beautiful as a marsh fairy. She told him her name. Fritha. Through that winter, Ryada tended his wild birds. The snow goose mended slowly. Sometimes the girl would visit them. And when she left, he missed her.
Spring came haunting the marsh. Snow Goose's wounds healed, and Ryada placed her with the other wild geese in his compounds. He observed, though graceful in flight, a goose walking was remarkably comic. Fritha's visits and the snow goose had brought a new meaning to Ryada's life. Time passed. Then, one June morning, the great geese flocks were answering their timeless call to migrate, and with them went the snow goose. With the going of Snow Goose, so it was with Fritha. The year aged, autumn cried her leaves to the ground. Daily, Ryada watched the sea wall and the sky, hopefully waiting, waiting. It is mid-October the following year. A northeast wind foams the sea, the land sighs under the winter tide. Then high in the sky, another sound. Snow goose.
When the news reached Fritha, she came running along the sea wall, and for the first time in a year, this strange trinity were together. That winter was happy for Ryder. Fritha would watch him paint, and sometimes she cooked for him. Other times, they just walked by the gray, beckoning sea. Walking, talking, alone by the sea, seeing, being, timeless and free, sharing the sounds of land, sea and sky, walking, talking, just Fritha and I. Spring came, chicks turned to fledglings and learned to ride the currents of heaven. Came June and Snow Goose took her wings to a distant land and Fritha ceased her visits. Summer wed autumn and grew their winter child. Life became emptier for Ryada. His thoughts frequently returned to the girl and sometimes in the darkling night he thought he could hear her voice. an infant of hope, peace and plenty. But beyond the English seas, a black shadow fell across Europe. That winter, Ryada, from memory, painted Fritha as he had first seen her, holding the snow goose.
Strangely, that year, the Sky Princess did not return. These three lives had fallen into a curious natural rhythm. Only when the snow goose came did the girl visit, and without them, life for Ryder became very lonely. The answer to his loneliness was coursing the night sky. Ryder ran out into the snow-covered marsh. Looking up, he saw white wings beating across the moon. When Fritha came this time, Ryder saw that the girl and her was gone. In her place, a young woman.
Nature's brief for Ryada appeared to have been solitude, but that was past. Those months from winter to spring for him were child magic. Fritha's laughter, the green gray of her eyes like sea fret, and Snow Goose became dog tame, coming into the lighthouse and trying to hold conversations. <laughs> Fine weather, a sunlit, light, leaping sea. Ryder and Fritz sail together in his little boat. Birds migrated early that year. Like the rest of the world, they were ill at ease. For across the sea, Europe was burning. <laughs> Thank you. 
Unexplainably, the snow goose did not leave. She be going to stay, Philip. Somehow, the spell the bird had girt about them was broken. There was no going away anymore. Suddenly, Fritha was afraid, and that which made it was the look in Ryada's eyes. Deep, welling, unspoken things. I must go. She was far away before she dared a backward glance. He was standing on the sea wall, a dark, lonely speck against the evening sky. Though they did not know it, the story of Snow Goose, Fritha and Ryada was fast drawing to an end. It was the night when Fritha next came to visit. She found Ryada feverishly preparing his boat to sail. In tumbling words, he told her, the British army, men on beaches, trapped like wounded birds. Danke! Survivors told many stories, but none so strange as of a small boat and a hunchback, defying all dangers, of men saved, then the mine, and flying over the dead boatman, a goose, a great white snow goose.
For days Fritha waited at the lighthouse. She fed the birds. But long, long before the snow goose came dipping out of a crimson sky in a last farewell, Fritha knew that Philip Ryder would never return. The Trinity had shattered on the glass of all. She faced the open sea and said what he had always known, but never heard. I love you, Philip. I love you. On the Essex coast, between Chelmbury and the ancient oyster fishing hamlet of Wickledroth, lies the Great Marsh. It is one of the last wild places in England. Desolate, lonely. 